Truth crushed the earth shall rise again, and the truth shall set you free. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. I started working harder than anybody else. I said, I'm not working for them. I've been cheating myself and my family. Whatever you're doing, develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. The enemy takes advantage of people when we go through sorrowful and sad situations. It's normally be sad if you lose a loved one or, or you lose a job or you lose a house or you lose anything. But don't let the enemy use that sadness as an access point to talk you into depression. There is a certain amount of grief that Christians are supposed to have. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope. We don't sorrow to the same degree because we are believers. There is a certain amount of sorrow that is inherent with the human experience. My father went through a time when felt like he was in Babylon. Back in the 1950s, he had been pastoring a successful church. They just built a new auditorium, held a thousand people. His dreams were coming to pass. Then my sister Lisa was born with something like cerebral palsy. My father went to a hotel for a few days to be alone. He read the scripture like he was reading it for the first time. And he saw how Jesus went about healing people and performing miracles. He came back to his church with a new passion. He thought they would be excited, but they didn't like his new message of faith and victory. It didn't fit their tradition. And there was so much contention, he ended up having to leave the church. He had spent years pouring into those people. Now there was nothing to show for it. He was in exile, so to speak. But I've learned nothing happens without God's permission. We may not understand it. It may not seem fair, but God knows what he's doing. He wouldn't have allowed it if it was going to keep you from your purpose. When you feel like you're in exile, you've been pushed out, having to start over, gone through a divorce, been betrayed, dealing with a loss. It's tempting to settle, get discouraged, think you've seen your best days. That's when you have to dig down deep. Say, God, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me, but I trust you. I know you're still on the throne. You said your plans for me are for good. While I'm in Babylon, I'm still going to praise you. Still going to be my best. Still going to pursue my dreams. I'm still going to believe for your favor. My father was disappointed. It was like the wind was knocked out of him. But he didn't sit around in self-pity. He didn't get bitter. God, why am I in exile? Why did I get pushed out? He and my mother went out and found an old rundown building used to be a feed store they started Lakewood with 90 people he had a thousand members before now just a fraction he had a beautiful brick sanctuary now this little wood building sometimes to reach your destiny you have to go backwards so God can take you further forward God doesn't always do things in a straight line in what makes sense there will be closed doors disappointments people that walk away things you didn't see coming you look up and you're in Babylon you were doing great in Jerusalem but things unexpectedly changed in these times it don't make sense you came down with an illness lost a main contract the friend betrayed you you have to remind yourself that God is still in control being in Babylon is not a surprise to him don't panic God knows how to take what was meant for harm and turn it to your advantage he may not deliver you from it but he will prosper for you in it. Being in Babylon is a test. Going through things you don't understand, things that are not fair, that shows what your character is. That shows what you're capable of handling, how much God can trust you with, how much influence you can carry, how much responsibility he can give you. What you do in the tough times will determine how high you rise. My father could have slacked off. God, when you give me a big church, I'll be my best again. When I have a thousand members, then I'll study, then I'll prepare and do my best. No, my father preached to those 90 people like he was preaching to thousands. Never missed a service. While he was waiting for promotion, waiting for growth, waiting for favor, he developed his gifts. He served, he visited people in the hospital, he helped those in need. 10 years went by. The church still had less than 200 people. Those were very important years. Years of testing, years of proving. God was seeing what my father was made of. Daddy proved that he would do the right thing when it was hard. That he would be his best when things weren't growing. That he would build, dream, plant, even though he was in Babylon. 1972, it was like God opened up a faucet. People started coming to the church from all over the city. It grew to a thousand. 
then 2000, then four, then eight. Here we are today. My father would have never reached his destiny without being pushed out of that church. What was inside of him was bigger than the denomination he was in. Don't fight the closed doors, the disappointments, the people that walk away. You don't know what God is up to. Sometimes he has to move you away from what you're comfortable with. You can't see it, but he knows something is limiting you. You may go through these seasons of testing, seasons of proving. It's easy to get discouraged, slack off, but you need to keep being your best. Nothing is changing. That's okay. Keep doing the right thing. God told the Israelites, you're going to be in Babylon for some years. I'm not going to turn this around overnight, but while you're here, don't put your life on hold. Build, plant, marry, increase. We're all going to have these Babylon seasons where nothing is improving. Like my father, you're being your best, but not seeing growth. Keep building, keep pursuing, keep serving past those tests. God may not bring you out of Babylon, but at the right time, he will cause you to prosper in Babylon. This is what happened with Joseph in the scripture. At 17 years old, God gave him a dream that he would lead a nation and have great influence. He was excited, but his brothers, not so much. They didn't like the fact that he had a big dream and that there was favor on his life. They were taking care of sheep in another city. His father asked Joseph to go check on them. When they saw Joseph coming, they thought this was their big chance to get rid of him. They threw him into a pit. They were going to leave him there, but a caravan of Ishmaelites came traveling through. They ended up selling him as a slave. Joseph was in a foreign country working for a high-ranking military officer named Potiphar. Here a few weeks earlier, his few future looked so bright. He was wearing the coat of many colors that his father had given him, his father's favorite child. But life has a way of taking twists and turns, things that we didn't see coming. Now Joseph found himself in Babylon, so to speak, in exile, in captivity, just like the people in Jeremiah's day. Joseph had every right to be bitter, discouraged. He didn't do anything wrong, but Joseph understood this principle, that there are times we're going to find ourselves in exile. Instead of sitting around in self-pity, he kept being his best, using his gifts and talent. He served with such excellence that Potiphar noticed him. He stood out from among all the other staff. Potiphar put him in charge of his whole house. The script... says that Joseph became a favorite of Potiphar. It's interesting how Joseph was a favorite of his father. That door closed. He went into exile, but notice how God works. If you keep using your gifts, keep being your best, favor will follow you into exile. He became the favorite of his boss. 
The favor didn't leave him just because he changed locations. Didn't leave him because people were jealous. He had a bad break. He was in captivity. The favor on your life didn't leave you because you're in a pandemic. Somebody walked away. You had a disappointment. It's still there. Keep shining where you are. Keep excelling. Keep serving. Keep giving. The right people are going to be for you. The right doors are going to open. Being in Babylon did not stop the blessing God put on your life. Your life is like a stock chart. When your life takes a dip, it ain't time to trip. It ain't time to sell the stock. Facebook takes dips. You don't sell the stock because it took a dip. You got to look at what made the stock great in the first place. That, that's, that's just a little dip. You have no idea where God takes you on the next uptick. When the news hit the fan, all them haters going to go somewhere and be quiet. Because they're going to see. You can't downgrade me. I have the same gift that God gave me. They can never take my gift. You can take this show and take that show. All you did was replant me. Very and planted appears to be the same thing, but it ain't. When you bury something, you say goodbye to it. When something is planted, you expect to see it again. I'm planted. If you expect nothing good to happen, nothing good is going to happen. I just happen to believe.